All right, so today we're looking over two different VHS camcorders. I bought these camcorders specifically for well, recording with a VHS quality. You know, there's a lot of filters out there that are giving off that VHS uh, kind of found footage filter effect. And uh, I figure the right way to do it is just use the real thing. And uh, the one on the right here is the one I'm going to use most uh, for, like, my music that I record since it's an older style of music I'm going to use a, a VHS camcorder to record it and get that nice late 80s to the 90s video effect when I do concerts now this one on the left here I'll eventually get a battery order for this one um, it's a handy camera I mean it's not as nice as the one on the right and I'll show you why but this one on the left here I think it's uh I think it's something worth keeping around in order to record, uh, you know, family home movies. Uh, unlike what people don't seem to do that anymore, you know. It's just uh, Snapchat, you make a little memory, and half the time you forget to save it and make sure it's uh, stored forever. And so I think that's uh, one thing we're missing uh, now that the uh, popular generation of VHS recording is gone. But anyways... When you buy these uh, things, I got an RCA on the left from the late 90s. I got a Panasonic from the mid to late 80s on the right there. Um, what you want to make sure whenever you buy one of these from eBay or Goodwill, especially if the condition is not tested, you want to make sure that the uh, VHS compartments open up and eject because um, the heads inside of those that the tapes wrap around, even if they're empty, if either the bands that cause them to rotate are worn out and uh, do not hold, um, when you turn them on, they're supposed to reset themselves. And if the bands that hold them and cause the rotation to happen are loose, uh, it will not go through that process and you will not be able to eject the tapes and therefore you don't have a working camera, which is sad because uh, that means that the camera itself, you know, the lens and everything is probably in good working condition but just because it can't eject the tape, you're not able to do anything. Um, what I can say, though, is that both of these models do work. I actually got this one at a, a Goodwill just a, just in my hometown here, and uh, it didn't come with a power brick or anything. I had to buy an AC adapter, but uh, it surely does work, and I can make it have a second life, essentially. This one came with everything besides a working battery, but I have a battery on order. All right, so... The one I want to get into detail here is the Panasonic on the right, because you'll see with the Panasonic, it only has a 14x zoom, but that's okay. I mean, it's not digital zoom, so you're not losing much quality as you zoom in. And then uh, you have the ability to manually adjust all of these features of your video. You have the automatic uh, focus to manual focus. You just flip that off, and all of a sudden this works. doesn't work when the auto is on. But the autofocus itself is pretty good too. And then the high speed shutter, it's as simple as flicking this back a few times. And you can either set it to automatic or you can choose your own uh, shutter rate. And then uh, the backlight feature, that one works pretty well out. Whenever I record, I'll show off these features and I'll actually convert the VHS footage to digital so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the cool thing about this is with the 14x power zoom lens, these uh, buttons here are pressure sensitive. So if you lightly press them, it'll slowly zoom in. And then if you push all the way down, that's when you get that high speed zoom for like action shots and stuff, which I thought that feature was pretty neat. Um, now all of these features seem pretty basic, and they are. And that's why I like this camera much more. Because... When we go over to this RCA camera that was made in the late 90s, uh, don't mind this homemade grip, it came from Goodwill like that. Uh, this is the RCA Auto Shot. The model code is like CC3, I don't know. But uh, the main boast of this camera when it was released is that it has the ability to just point and shoot. You don't need to adjust your shutter speed or focus or anything like that plus you have this color view screen which I mean it is pretty cool I've never seen a VHS camcorder with one of these so yeah I do like it now the only thing that 
sucks is you can't adjust your fade. You can't adjust, well, you can do fade, but you can't adjust your backlight. You can't have a light on top of this one. There is no manual focus and there is no manual high speed shutter adjustment. So, what you're stuck with is whatever video is produced by the camera's automatic adjustments. And then these uh, three features, I guess you could count it as probably 12 if you choose all the different effects and different fade effects. But you just don't have as much control over the quality of your picture. So I'm going to go ahead and turn both of these on. Panasonic AG-188 and then the RCA Auto Shot. Um, we're going to go ahead pop a tape into one of these. I'll pop it into this one. Do a little bit of a filming on it. And then we'll watch it on the RCA and uh, compare some things here. So, with the... Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, another cool feature about the uh, Panasonic it has an external microphone jack like a lot of honestly a lot of uh, consumer camcorders back in the day had an external microphone jack um, and that is not found on the RCA which means uh, this is the reason I'm going with this one for when I record concerts because I can put a nice boom shot mic on here and have higher quality video now yeah, you can see that it's all focused in I'm just gonna go ahead and hit record uh, let's see, I think it's recording. Yeah, it's recording, and uh, you can adjust the brightness of your viewfinder here. And let's see, makes it a little bit easier, but look at that. Now, through the viewfinder, this video looks really good, and uh, I noticed when I recorded with it before, it took about five seconds for the recording to actually... Uh, be viewable and I think that's because of the automatic tracking but nonetheless it's been recording for a little bit it's heard me talking so we'll go ahead and shut that off now alright let's make sure that is stopped alright and then we'll go ahead turn it off and eject Now, did you notice uh, how quiet that was while we were recording here? There was very, very little mechanical noise when you're recording with that model. And, uh, yeah, you're going to find out for yourself what happens with the RCA one here. For some reason, this one always takes two button heads to pop open. All right, so here's the RCA model here. And uh, we're going to have to use the digital viewfinder on the outside anyways because the normal one does not work. And I'm not sure why, but I do know the microphone works, so I mean, I guess it's still a win. You don't have to keep your eye held up. Well, let's go ahead and... For some reason, this one always is zoomed in the second you turn it on, but... That's going. Oh yeah, another cool feature about this is when you're playing back the VHS tapes, it has a built-in speaker, which honestly, that's I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so I'll go ahead and start recording this. And I don't know if you can hear it, but even when it's not recording, the uh, the VHS camcorder is making a lot of mechanical noise. I don't really know why that is. I haven't even hit record yet because, see, there's a little pause button there. So here we go. And it's recording. Um, I suppose I could turn that so the microphone's facing that way. Um, by the way, that's a little speaker there. Right there. <laughs> um... And then we'll go in. This one doesn't have the pressure sensitive zoom feature, I believe. Yeah, it's just uh, do or die right there. It does have the little digital instant zoom, which I suppose is supposed to be handy for action shots, but in reality, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever rapidly zoomed in before, but when you zoom in real far, real fast, you lose track of whatever you're trying to have in your point of view. So we'll go ahead and uh, stop recording now here.
All right, and then we'll go ahead and switch to VCR mode. Yeah, not gonna lie, this thing sounds a little painful. But now that it's not in a recording mode, we're able to rewind the tape. All right, and we're able to watch everything that we just recorded right now. That's some recording from earlier, and I think, yeah, it was on this camcorder, too. I think it's recording. Yeah, it's recording, and, uh, you can adjust the brightness of your viewfinder here. See, it makes it a little easier, but look at that. Now, through the viewfinder, this video looks really good, and, uh, I noticed when I recorded with it before, it took about five seconds for the recording to actually, uh, be viewable, and I think that's because of the automatic tracking, but nonetheless, it's been recorded for a little bit, and it's recording, uh, I suppose I could turn that so the microphone's facing that way, uh, by the way, that's the little speaker there, right there, <laughs> um, and then we'll go ahead, this one doesn't have the pressure sensitive zoom feature, I believe, yeah, it's just, uh, do or die right there. It does have a little visual instant zoom. Alright, so we're just going to stop that right there. And that footage is honestly worthless to me. So we'll go ahead and just record back over that whenever. But uh, one thing I noticed about uh, the difference between the audio and video quality between each camera. So for the AG88, um, the image was well, it's exactly what I want. It was that warm 80s sort of glowing, uh, highlight sensitive picture from a, a CCD image sensor. And I don't know what sensors in this RCA unit, um, but as far as video quality, essentially the video quality from the RCA one here is uh, is higher. You know, it's better image quality than the Panasonic one. Now for the audio quality, it was tough to say because the Panasonic, it was it seemed quieter. But I also believe the microphone on that is much more uh, direction oriented, and I was right behind it. I believe this RCA one is more of a dynamic microphone, in my opinion. So it sounded louder, but at the same time, I feel like it was almost already being uh, blown out. I believe that the max limit was already almost being reached. So as far as audio quality, especially with the ability to put an external microphone on this Panasonic unit here, I am pretty sure that the audio quality is better. And for the overall achievement of getting that 1980s uh, video warmth and uh, sort of distortion effect, I believe that I like this uh, Panasonic AG188 most. But, I mean, for having the ability to keep your memory stored on VHS and uh, recording family memories and being able to look back on them whenever you want and the handy feature of being able to play back your tapes instantly I mean the RCA Auto Shot is still something worth having so I like both of these cameras it's just that each one serves a different purpose in my house my girlfriend probably she keeps saying that it isn't going to uh, last very long I'm going to be interested for two months and I'm going to give up but no believe me I still think that there's something very special about your uh, VHS camcorders and I think that they are a product worth preserving and I think there's something that uh, might actually have a comeback in the future just because of not only how cool it was to look like a cameraman when you're holding one of these over your shoulder but just because there's like some genuine memories that have always been made on VHS home camcorders that you can't simply make with uh, Snapchat and your phone camera.